Look what I found at the Valley of Fire, Nevada. The flowering cacti with attractive bloom coincidentally matches the color of my shoes. Also, this Joya cactus enjoying a magnificent view and so much more. This is the Valley of Fire State Park located in Nevada. A nature preservation and public recreation area covering nearly 46,000 acres. Valley of Fire is located 50 miles northeast of Las Vegas and got its name from the red sandstone which formed more than 150 million years ago. These red walls often appear to be on fire when reflecting the sun's rays, hence the name Valley of Fire. You are looking across 150 million years of time. The great maze of the canyon, domes, towers, ridges, and valleys before you are carved from sand deposited during the time when dinosaurs walked the earth. This is wild, virtually untouched wilderness. It is an adventure in color for you to experience by car and on foot. The climate here is warm and dry, typical of the Mojave Desert where this park lies. Winters are mild, with daytime temperatures ranging from 54 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit and at night as low as the mid-30s to 50s. But daily summer temperatures often exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit and may even reach 120s, which varies widely from day to night. It can be very hot during the day and very cold at night. So the best time to visit the park is during springtime where the weather is milder. Several cacti species are growing here and the most common are the beaver tail cactus and the choya cactus. But there are a few other species I've spotted along the way. The cacti's ability to store water is a great advantage for them to survive the harsh weather conditions of this area. But keeping their stored water is not enough to survive. They need to conserve and protect it too. They not only have fewer pores and thicker leaf covering to prevent moisture loss, they also have numerous spikes that act as a barrier from the strong winds provide some shade during extreme heat of the day, and serve as their blanket when it's too cold at night. The harsh environment is not the only threat to their existence. They also need to protect their supply from thirsty insects and animals as well. Look at this Joya cactus here. See how many spikes it has grown? Their spikes are so thick that they almost cover its entire body. Aside from the long and bigger spikes, numerous tiny ones further cover underneath to prevent small insects from feasting on their water supply. Succulents are serophytes. Serophytes are plants that have developed unique means of storing and conserving water. Some serophytes have tough and waxy leaves or coated with shiny oils, which also cuts down on transpiration. Or they have small, fluttery leaves that help to cool the plants. Take a look at this Opontia bacillari cacti growing in the red sand of this valley. Its flattened pads may look safe to touch, but instead of long spines, it has tiny irritating bristles called glochids. Glochids can easily detach from the plant and lodge in your skin and cause irritation. The soil crust where it grows not only prevents erosion by keeping the soil together, it also holds and retains water. 
the plant's root tap into this spongy crust to survive hotter and drier locations. The soil also promotes plant life by taking nitrogen from the air and changing it to a kind of nitrogen plants need. As you drive along the park, you'll not only see its wondrous beauty, you might also get lucky to spot some inhabitants of the park, like this bighorn sheep who don't seem to mind an audience while having lunch. Or maybe you can even spot a group of them. Some areas can get too windy, like here in Seven Sisters, where you can hear the whistling sounds of the wind as it passes through the holes of the rocks. Here in front of the visitor center, you'll see many opontias or prickly pears. There are more than 300 species of prickly pear cactus. The edible fruit, which forms after it blooms in springtime, looks like a pear. You'll also find some barrel cactus here too. And the more challenging the location is, the more stressed they are and the more spines they grow to protect themselves. I hope you enjoyed traveling with me today to the Valley of Fire, Nevada. And if you want to know more about succulents, check out my free online course. The link is in the description below. And if you're interested in growing colorful succulents, the link is also in the description below. Take care, everyone.